Just Familia. What's up? Okay, we're back for the second game of the day. Nice. E4. I'm going to play C6. I'm going to play the Karo Khan. Or in my opinion, in my case, the Karo Kant. Okay, we're just going to go for the Knight Pin. I've been having a love hate relationship with the Karo Khan recently. I seem to always get into some losing position along this light square diagonal here. Um, if he pushes h3, I'll take his knight here. Okay, so in this position, I'm always quite unsure if it's better to push c5 or e6. Um, or just plain get the knight out. <laughs> I think c5 is recommended so you can get the knight out to c6. Um, the one thing that I don't like about it is that it seems kind of slow to have to push two pawns to get the dark square bishop out to c5. So I don't know if this is the move. I don't know if I'm making the e6 move one move too late, but I think my next move will just be c5. I guess I could try to pin his knight, huh? No, but hold on. So I think the idea with the Karo Khan is that your pawns end up on light squares. So it's better to get rid of the light square bishop and try to keep the dark square bishop around. I think that's the idea. I've been experimenting with putting the, uh, doing the, what's it called? Prosciutto, Franchetta, Francesca, Finch, Finchetto, whatever it's called. Someone will inevitably correct me on that. Um, but basically going to just a G7, a bishop G7 move on G6, and then getting the knight out to E7. But... Just going to play C5. Feels a bit unnatural. I'm kind of expecting the check here. On b5, I'll just block in with c6, hopefully. By the way, in this position, is it better to just take the pawn if they don't take, or is it better to push up to c4 with the pawn? Um, I can never quite tell. From what I understand, the idea in the Karo Khan is that you kind of are fighting for the d4 square or you're trying hard to get the opponent's d4 pawn yeah so i was fully expecting that so we'll just block in with the knight and then recapture he still hasn't attacked the light square bishop which is good Yeah, I think at this point we take. We take and let him get his queen out. And now I think the idea here is that... Yeah, see, this is what I don't like, is that a lot of times it seems like this knight just gets pinned. And there's no way around it, but... It seems like b4 is like a really strong move here. You know? Because he basically has to go move his queen to go recapture this. Yeah, I think this is good. I'm attacking his knight here, which I really like. Yeah, see, this is this is uh, where I struggle with the Karo Khan, is that uh, the, I, I, want, I always want to castle as fast as possible, but I just can't seem to ever find the time to do it. <laughs> okay, so that's good. So that just, that basically, okay, this is just attacking the pawn. So I'm almost 
I don't know what's better, pushing the pawn up here? Or like even getting the queen out maybe is like a valid move? I imagine getting the bishop out is okay. Only thing that sucks is that this pawn is going to be kind of hard to defend on c6. But this will allow me to play knight e7 next and then I can at least castle. Um, only thing I have to be careful of here is that if he tries to go for the g pawn, it might be a little bit tough. Hmm. No, but I don't want to lock my dark square bishop in if I play c5. I think I'm just going to go for that. Also could have just played the check. Oh, why didn't I play check? Well, no, he would have just defended with his uh, dark square bishop there. That wouldn't have really made any sense. Okay, so I think I have to play knight e7 and then f5. And then just castle already. His knight's like very hindered. His knight's on a really bad spot. Which I like. I also plain could just try to like attack this pawn too. But I feel like castling is just better here. We're kind of getting past move 10, so bigger castling is good. Hmm. Hmm. what it looks like he's trying to do is remove the defender from d4 he probably wants me to re no what's he what's he going for here I think h6. No, I need to be careful. Hmm. I need to be careful here because... Let's think about this. I don't want to screw this one up. <laughs> I mean, I have two defenders here. If he takes, I'll just retake with the queen. Uh, I'm just going to castle. I'm just worried about pins here on the G file. I'll probably go C7 next with the queen. C7, it'll attack this pawn uh, and protect the knight and connect the rooks. I think that'll be kind of a strong move. You see, what I really liked about taking on d4 is that his center is pretty weak. And my center is like really strong right now. I'll probably go... Probably go c7, knight f5. Yeah, okay, so he's trying to play this really annoying move. And how do I... How do I prevent this annoying move? Yeah, I can't really move my knight. He's just looking for the pin, so I feel like I'm... Do I just have to push up g6 here. This always gets me. This queen g file stuff always gets me. Hmm. I think I have to play g oops, g6, right? Otherwise I'm just losing a rook on f8, right?
Yeah, G6 had to be played, right? I guess since he's defending e5 now, maybe it's better to play something like knight b6. Yeah, maybe, or excuse me, knight b6, queen b6. Maybe queen b6 is better so I can start attacking him somewhere. I basically want to move my queen and then move my knight. I see what he's doing there. I see what he's doing. He's trying to get his knight over here. I'm half tempted to play b6. I mean, maybe I just don't need that. Need this pawn at this point. Um. I think he's looking to take the c6 pawn. So I'll probably have to play queen c6 at uh, c7 at this point or even like queen d7 maybe. I want to keep the dark square bishop around, that's the thing. Yeah, you know, I I, I don't care about this pawn anymore. It's sort of done its job already, so if he wants to take it, it's a bit of a passive move. I think he's just trying to take c6 in hopes that um, sort of I take with the knight here and expose the queen, but that ain't gonna happen, boss. I could always just push this pawn up too. Only downside is that it uh, removes a defender from the knight. And I could push up c5. I still think he would actually play. Yeah, I have to defend c6. Hmm. I think this is a pretty threatening move. Now, what kind of sucks about this is that I can't really play knight f knight f five anymore. I think knight. Uh, why do I keep calling it a knight? This is a knight. This is a queen. Dyslexia, man. I'm telling you. Okay, so the rooks are connected, the knights attacked. Uh, the bishop's in kind of a weak spot. But he's going to be forced to either... He'll either be forced to move his knight or protect his knight. I'm willing to bet he's probably just going to go protect his knight with like a bishop or something. I'm hoping he moves it. I think if he moves it, it'd be better for me so I can go knight f5. That would be the dream. Yeah, I I really want to get the knight off of a uh, e7. But yeah, I still just have like a really nice structure going on here. But he wants to trade, huh? I think that was a bad move for him. I'm 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 just going to be frank. The dark square bishop seems like a really valuable piece in this game. So for him to just give it up that way doesn't seem all that great. He He's going to have to move his knight. I think he's going to go knight, probably f3. I don't think he's going to defend that knight.
Yeah, so I basically have dark square control at this point, almost. But I have a lot better control of the dark squares. He could also go like knight b3, but that just seems like a really passive move. I think his best bet is probably... I think his best bet is probably knight... Knight f3. I can push a pawn and just try to kick this knight. I could go attack a pawn. I could... Attack this knight this way. I don't quite want to get rid of the dark square bishop though, that's the thing. I honestly think just kicking it is like the best thing right now. Now I can control c4 as well. I don't think there's any reason not to play c5 here. I have dark square dominance. <laughs> F3 is probably going to be his best bet here. He could always defend with the pawn too, but I think that's going to be pretty bad for him. Yeah, c5 seemed like a good move. I think I made the right decision. Where was it? Defending the d4 pawn with bishop c5 and not pawn c5 earlier. It seemed like the right thing to do. Wouldn't it be funny if this game ended in a abandonment too? That'd be so lame. Two games that end in abandons in a row. Not exactly how I want to do this a thousand elo climb thing. Would actually like to win by winning, you know? Surprise how long he's thinking about this. Then again, yeah, it, it, it just seemed like the only move. Um, I could go for the fork on these two pieces here. I'm debating between c4 and making this really nice pawn chain, or just going for the attack on these two pieces, or getting a rook out onto the open file. I don't want to disregard his knight yet. Actually, I'd almost I'd almost be willing to like sack no, I I wouldn't want to get rid of the dark square bishop. What I'm uh what I'm trying to avoid is No, but even then he couldn't do that because I have g6. I was thinking like knight g5 and then uh, if he gets his queen out to h7. But even that's just not going to happen. Yeah, because he can't get his queen out to h4. So... I think I'm just going to look for the fork on the pawns and just try to win some material here.
my next move will probably be like rook b8. Maybe rook big two is a little bit too passive. Guess we'll find out. I was watching a video earlier sort of about how b2 can be kind of like a poison pawn if you try to capture it with your queen um, in the sense that if you get your queen out here and all the action is over here and you're just kind of focused on pawns that are doing nothing, sometimes it can make your queen super inactive during the game. But I think in this scenario, it's actually okay. Um, yeah, so what I think he's going to do is try to go for h4. Um, and I'm almost... I'm, I'm almost okay to take with a dark square bishop here. I just don't think he's... I, I think queen h4, queen h7 is like his only chance. So... Yeah, I'm I'm I feel like I'm just gonna be so much further up. I mean he he basically has a really weak pawn structure. I feel like I'm gonna be able to promote these pawns and at least just trade some pieces off. So I, I think it's time to let our friend go here. I just don't want to deal with this Queen H file stuff. <laughs> if I'm being frank. Uh, okay, so this is probably a fine pawn to take. That's actually a pretty good move. I think this might win a pawn for him, right? Hmm. Yeah, that's actually a good move by him. Yeah, it wins the pawn. But even then, I can just start trading off. But we'll still be even on the pawn count. Yeah, I'm okay with this. If he wants to do that, that's fine. I'm up to, so I'm totally fine to just start trading off. Hmm. I guess I could be safe and like try to attack too, but I don't know. Trading off just seems good. I could try to go trade off on my terms, like on B1. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. I see. I see.
think I just need to let him push, right? Hmm. I'd kind of like to trade queens off over here on F5. That would be an idea. Let's think about this. Can I just block in too? I wonder if blocking in is okay. H5. I think he would just push G4 though. I think that would be worse for me. Thinking about trading the rook off, but I don't want to play a rookless game. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be annoying. Hmm. Maybe I need to put the king on g7 and basically just add another defender here. Or maybe unpinning the king is the idea too. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I just go like d8 and try to offer the trade that way. I think I'm just going to do that. I'm going to go d8, offer the queen trade, simplify the game, and then I should be able to pass one of these pawns. Yeah, I'm going to go d8. If he pushes h5, I'm just going to go d8. I mean, if he if he wants to take this pawn, it's fine. I think it's just going to be a slow move. I'll recapture with the h pawn. But I think queen d8 is just, is like perfectly acceptable here. And if he doesn't want to accept the trade, if he wants to just fall back or something, I'll probably just start pushing the d-pawn. Yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about, getting the queen over here, like on b2. Yeah, I'm going to go d8. Uh, I'm not going to think twice about this. If he captures with his queen, obviously, I just take. Um, yeah, I'm just going to offer the trade and uh, just try to win with the pawn advantage here. And then I should just be winning um, a pawn as well, too. But yeah, this is what I was talking about, uh, getting the queen over here, like on b2, and trying to scope these pawns that are inactive. Um, even though... It's really tempting, and I think it was okay in this scenario. Um, there's a lot of cases where it seems like it doesn't really work. Yeah, so I do kind of have to be careful here. Um, my queen is a little bit, or <laughs> queen, my king can't go to uh, g2, so I have to be really mindful of him getting the rook on the back rank here. So, I'd almost rather just get my king over here and maybe like trade off this way. 
Yeah, because if he gets his rook on the back rank, um, it's going to be a mate since I won't be able to uh, play g7 here. So I'm going to give my king just like a breathing square. Yeah, maybe a5 was the move here, but... Yeah, maybe f8 was actually a little bit slow. Yeah, f8 was kind of slow. I probably should just push this pawn and push this pawn as well. He can't really win that race, so... Yeah, I have to be careful. My king basically can't move to these three squares, so... Yeah, I think f8 was a little bit passive. I think, honestly, as long as I just keep my rook on the back rank, I'm okay. Yeah. I probably could push the g-pawn or the f-pawn at this point. Maybe just let him take and try to take with the king here. No, I'm not taking the draw. Man, that was really sneaky. I didn't even push a button there. Uh, that was kind of wild. Hmm. He's not going to be able to stop both of these, so... Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to just try to break one of these, uh, break this open. I don't know if this is the move, but... See how this goes. This would be really unfortunate to lose. If he wants to trade rooks off here, so be it. I'm attacking both of these pawns, so I'll probably scope this H pawn next. It's going to be really hard for him to win. I think if I just tuck my king over here, it should be okay. I doubt he'll be able to push this pawn. He's not going to be able to stop both of these, so... I know I'm probably not playing, like, optimally here, but I think it's going to be just really hard for him to win. His pieces are really disconnected, so... Uh, I'm willing to sack a rook here. It's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, there's a couple different ways we can do this. Uh, yeah, that, it's, that would have been really hard for him to win. He He was gaining nothing by... Taking the pawn on e6 there. Um, his best bet, honestly, would have just been to get the rook off the board. But honestly, with with the material difference, um, it, it, it was pretty one-sided. But yeah, GG. JB242925. <laughs> Good game. Wow, 88% accuracy. I'm actually pretty happy about that. 1300 versus 1550. Okay, cool. Well, let's do the review. Uh, I didn't make any like egregious moves this game. This has actually probably been one of my best Arocon games and I'm not just trying to toot my own horn but I feel like this is one of the first games I've played where I haven't fallen into one of the Karo traps um usually I do something really dumb 
along this E8 to A4 light square diagonal um, and just lose this way or like a bishop ends up on B7 and takes the rook or something like that. But just none of that happened this game. Um, and I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, okay, so bishop g4. One of the traps that I've fallen into is just taking the knight too early here. And a lot of people have recommended to me is don't take the knight here until the bishop is attacked with h3. So that was one thing I tried to do a little bit different here. So I think this c5 was... Probably the move that swung swung the game in my favor. Yeah. Yeah, from all the videos that I've watched about the Karo Khan, the big idea is basically to disconnect the um disconnect White's pawn chain on d4. So I wanted to try that this game and see how it goes, and I think it really paid off. And I think the reason why it works is because you end up with this isolated pawn here on e5. Um, and then black basically just has a superior center. That's sort of my understanding of it. So I wonder if there was a better move here. I, I was going back and forth. So it looks like c5 was the move here. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. And then b4. Ah, uh, sure. So this just removes a defender. Rook c8. Hmm. Isn't rook c8 kind of bad? Because, like, doesn't that technically remove the defender from d4? Right? So, like, rook c8 takes, takes. Can't he just do that? Oh, but then you get, like, a rook on the seventh rank or something like that? Oh, rook c4? Really? Hmm. I don't know. Taking the pawn seems like more fun there. It seems like it's better to just develop the bishop and recapture here if that line is played, but oh well. Okay, so bishop c5 was okay. I'm glad castling was the idea here. I was really concerned about <laughs> castling kind of being a trap. Now you have a backwards pawn. Didn't seem that bad. Ah, sure. c7, okay. Yeah, this was a poor choice of moves because it was giving up the the dark square bishop, which was pretty valuable this game. Okay, so c5 was the idea. This loses a pawn, really? Oh. Oh, I see. Okay. Hold on, let me go back to that knight g5 move. That's it. That's the whole continuation. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so a pawn was one here. Playing a5. Okay. I really didn't want to play h5. Here's why. h5, I figured g4. It's a bit of a trap, and now he can do what he wants with the G file since this pawn is still pinned. That's why I didn't want to play this move. So, yeah, I don't know. I know the engine still says I have a pretty big advantage here, but yeah, like he takes. Um, oh, well. And then, oh, the eval bar is still like heavily favored for black here. Interesting. Yeah, I wanted to play the safe route and just trade off here, so. F8 was a mistake. <laughs> okay, so A5 would have been the move here. Yeah. I guess keeping the king here, I would just always have to leave the rook on the back rank. And I just wanted to try avoiding that, but yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. And yeah, it was kind of... Oh, wow. It looked like I was playing decent moves here towards the end. Oh, wow. It's like one of the few times where I've actually gotten all decent moves in the end game. That's pretty rare. 
Um, maybe besides this F8. Yeah, that's pretty rare for me. It doesn't happen too often. Okay, cool. GG. Well, yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with this uh, Karo Khan game. Um, I feel like I'm getting better at it, so I'm happy about it. Also, new ELO high score. Always exciting. Uh, I think this is my rapid highest rating, yeah? All right, cool, yeah. Well, so we're improving. That's awesome. Well, thanks guys for watching, and see you in the next game.